Now that you have a well-developed personal narrative paragraph, it is time to add dialogue. Dialogue is something you're very familiar with. Dialogue is a conversation between two characters. When writing a personal narrative, you include dialogue to show what you are saying to the other people in your story and what they respond to you with. Dialogue makes our writing stronger. Do not forget that quotation marks show what characters say. The rules on the next slide will help you. Dialogue rules. Ways to use dialogue. You can use it at the beginning or end of a sentence. Cannon is a funny guy, said Sophie. Annie said, Maya is so sweet. Notice how in the first example, the dialogue came at the beginning of the sentence, but in the second example, the dialogue came at the end. You can even use dialogue in the middle of a sentence. The girl shouted, oh my, and ran away. The dialogue is right in the middle here. You can even have it in a broken quote or a split quotation. Since you didn't do your math homework, my teacher said, you'll have to finish it at recess. You see here that the dialogue starts in the beginning. We have who, the describing words that describe who's saying the dialogue, and then more dialogue at the end of the sentence. Don't forget your grammar and capitalization rules. We're going to skip this first one for now and go straight to the second one. Commas and periods go inside the quotes. Waking up early, said Evan, is not cool. Notice the comma that separates the dialogue from the speaker is inside the quotation marks. And notice that the period at the very end also goes inside. If you're using any other types of punctuation, such as question mark or exclamation points, they also go inside the quotation marks. Don't forget to use commas to separate the dialogue and the speaker. Let's go to the mall, comma, said Kira. Keep in mind, though, that if you are using an exclamation point or a question mark, you can replace the comma with either of those punctuation marks. Capitalize the first letter of any dialogue. In the example, Ethan said, my new view is fab. You can see that the M in my, which is the first word of the spoken dialogue, is capitalized. Use these dialogue rules when adding dialogue to your personal narrative paragraph today. Before you're able to add dialogue to your personal narrative paragraph, you have to form it all on one slide. If you remember, you've already drafted three great explanation sentences of the events that you're describing. You've also drafted a topic sentence and a closing sentence. You have to use these two worksheets or slides to copy your amazing writing into one paragraph or one spot. So I copied the sentences on this slide and on this slide in order, starting with topic sentence, Explanation one sentence, explanation two sentence, explanation three sentence, and finally closing sentence. You will copy them all onto this slide and you end up with a beautiful personal narrative paragraph. I'm going to first read the directions because you'll have to do the same thing. It is time to put all of your work together in the form of a paragraph. Insert a text box into the space below and use a large size for your font to fill in the space. 
First, insert a title at the top of the writing space. The topic sentence goes in your first paragraph, followed by the detail explanation combo sentences. The last sentence is your closing sentence. Reread it and make sure it makes sense. It should be all about the same topic. Give lots of information and be written in complete sentences. You'll also want to add dialogue. On my next slide, I will read to you my whole paragraph with dialogue added in. You can see the dialogue that I added is in green text instead of purple text. Oh, and by the way, I didn't rewrite any of the purple sentences. They are all copied over from your previous slides. That's your hard work that you don't want to go to waste. Don't start over from scratch. Here we go. Waking up, I feel exhausted. My nerves and excitement kept me up all night. I roll out of bed, get my favorite teaching dress on, and log into the computer. While setting up my computer, I can't help but think about all the smiling students I will see in just a few moments. But, as I enter into my first Zoom session of the day, with my students in the waiting room, I realize that this is the first time I am live teaching. I start to sweat thinking about what could go wrong. I even say out loud, am I ready to do this? I guess I have to be. The feeling of relief took over me once I saw all my students eager to learn and smiling nonstop. While they were entering the Zoom, I couldn't stop announcing, Good morning and welcome back! I heard, Hello, Miss Pipitone, I missed you from Peyton. Boys and girls, I've added some great dialogue so far. Notice how commas separate the description of the speaker from the actual dialogue, quotation marks go around the words being spoken, punctuation goes inside of the quotation marks, and a capital letter starts off the dialogue. Let's keep reading. Right here. This was the beginning of me relaxing. As the Zoom continued, I could tell that they enjoyed the text I read, The Day You Begin by Jacqueline Woodson. Addison shared the theme of the text by stating, The theme is to include everyone and accept what makes them unique. I responded with, That is correct! This participation made me stop sweating and start relaxing a bit. Notice how when I described what Aniston was saying, I used a comma to separate the speaker from her actual dialogue. Quotation marks went around her dialogue. Capital letter began her dialogue. And punctuation ended her dialogue inside the quotation marks. I'm going to finish my small moment personal narrative right now. I had so much fun reading and talking about the text that I forgot to share my all about the teacher presentation with my kiddos. It didn't even bother me because the Zoom went so well, aside from some minor technology issues. Teaching through a computer isn't so stressful after all. I just need to remember to relax and to enjoy the time I have with my students. Boys and girls, my personal narrative paragraph is all done. I have read it to make sure that it is in sequential order, starting with a topic sentence or a catchy lead, followed by some important details that happened in my just one small moment of the day, ended with a catchy, clever conclusion, added some dialogue as well. I'm thinking later on in the year that I could turn this into a multi-paragraph personal narrative by describing all the technology issues I faced during my very first Zoom. All right, boys and girls, I'm so excited to read your small moment Zoom about one event from your first day of virtual learning or in-person learning.